welcome back to DS Trucks. I got the 450 hooked up, 2023 high output. And uh, yeah, we're gonna be doing some towing. I guess I'm doing a little bit of a pre-trip, make sure all my tires are up and everything's properly mounted, secured, not damaged or missing. Tires, uh, trailer connections uh, looking good. Uh, emergency breakaway. Wouldn't want that popping off. Sometimes if it's hooked up wrong, it can pop off and freaking stop everything. But that that's looking good. All my lights are working. Let's check. All lights are working. Tires up. Checked using a tire pressure gauge. Lights working. Somewhat secured in there. Tires. But in today's video, I'm going to be talking about towing with the F450 driving with the trailer. Right now, we've got the 5,000 pound trailer hooked up with another thousand pounds in the trailer, kind of to the rear though. We're still running some good tongue weight. I got the way safe hitch and still at about uh, 650 or so on the tongue. So right about right on the tongue. A couple hundred pounds in, in the, maybe not even a hundred pounds. Uh, but yeah, I got this truck now in tow haul mode i got the truck here in tow haul mode and it's kind of cool when you change the mode it changes the <laughs> whole experience so if you go into eco it comes green you go into tow haul it becomes black so i honestly wish it just stayed black the whole time i don't know if that's something that we can change but yeah let's go ahead and talk about the truck so Behind us, you can see, we got the trailer. And let's try not to hit nothing. Like a gas station pump. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the best tricks. The 450 is good for that trick. If you slam the brakes, like what we do is we slam the brakes and we hit the door, we go. And it always, <laughs> it always gets somebody. And the 450 is good because the brakes freaking grab on this truck. So the nice thing about the 450 is the fact that for a little bit more money. Now, depending on how you spec a 450, it really don't need to cost more money because if you spec it right, these these heavy duty components don't cost that much in comparison to the trim of the truck. So the difference between a Lariat Ultimate versus a standard Lariat, which is what we have, is probably about the difference from a 350 dually to a 450 dually. Maybe even it's cheaper to get a 450 than it is to get a Lariat Ultimate. And then you turn around with the resale value of a 450 versus a 350 dually. 450 dually is going to have better resale than a 350 dually because it's more rare look at this this guy's not gonna let me on the road here wow you freaking special ed driver Urgh. you're you're cutting me off to get up onto another truck's tail so uh the resale value on the 450 dually i think is going to be better than the 350 dually just the main thing is the 19.5 inch tires the massive brakes and the wide track turning axle race or right track uh, turning radius in the front, which is really what sets the 450 apart from the 350. You get a better, uh, depending on how you look at it, a better rear diff. So at the 430 rear gear with this diesel engine, uh, it's not going to be the best when you're not towing as far as acceleration from a dig it's almost too much torque like you can't really get traction anyway it feels kind of almost like you're going to break something if you stab it and it just the trash control is insane so a 3.55 might actually pull a little better a 410 which i think is what you get with a 350 dually 
diesel. I don't think you can get a 430 with a 350 dually diesel. That that's gonna be a little better. Uh, as far as the torque, we have so much torque in these engines that you really don't particularly need a 430 gear. But I do find that the 430 gear is a little bit better for like the four wheel drive. Just because it's geared so much, it overcomes any type of uh, any type of turning. If you're turning a lot in four wheel drive or plowing snow and stuff like that, where you're pushing real heavy, the 430 gear does work work out to your advantage quite a bit. Just because you, when you're plowing snow, you could be pushing some wet snow that's just heavier than what the truck can push to the point where. You got to get a little momentum behind you and kind of hit it, maybe five miles an hour momentum behind you and hit it to get it moving. So that's where, for me, I really like the 430 gear. Aside from plowing snow, 430 gear, I don't know. It's not really that useful for the weight. Unless you're going to tow the max weight, then you really can say, hey, we're towing like 40,000 pounds or 38,000, whatever the towing is on this then you can go ahead and say yeah 430 i need that gear but aside from that eh, you wind out your whole transmission so fast we're 49 uh, miles an hour and we're in 10th gear so at 49 this thing probably at about 40 miles an hour gets through all 10 gears and you're all engine after like 40 miles an hour it's no more gears so real short shifts winding out of the gears real quick and yeah it kind of is what it is that being said this engine especially the high output they increased the fuel pressure a little they got the more a little more cooling on the turbo on the other side of the turbo both both the high output and the nine high, high output uh have cooling on the turbo but on the high output they cool both sides of the turbo i love when traffic stops but on high i'll put that cool bolt so a little more heat i do find it to be a little bit more efficient uh, of an engine but um when you wind this thing out at 40 miles an hour you still have this engine that's just able to handle the higher rpms the way that it sips fuel, the, it, it really is a lot of it's load dependent versus just engine speed. Obviously, a little bit slower engine speed might work out better, but it really can still just sip fuel at a higher engine speed. You do see a degradation of MPG at high rates of speed, but you can cruise this thing at like 66 miles per hour and really uh, have some, some good... Uh, some good miles per gallon, but towing what we're towing right now behind us, 5,000 pound trailer, another thousand in the trailer. I can tell you right now that we really can't feel the weight, but uh, I mean, no BS, no, you can't feel it. I know a lot of times people say, oh, I'm pulling and I can't even tell it's there. You can tell it's there. On this truck right now, just 5,000, no, you can't feel it. Now I've loaded this trailer to the max before and I could feel that uh, the braking, when you, I mean beyond the max, I think I probably had like, this is a 16,000, it's got a 10,000 pound payload, I think I put 20 in it. I didn't weigh it though, but with like 20,000 in it, the brakes on the truck, you got to really be careful because... The brakes on the trailer, brakes on the truck really start to, that's where you start to feel that the weight's going to push you no matter what. So, not really over like the towing on the truck, but was over the weight of the trailer, and which is probably why that weight is in place. It's not like it really like broke anything particularly. I mean, maybe a little something got broke that day, but the braking on the trailer just wasn't enough to wear it could really stop that where you didn't feel it. Like you felt it in the brakes. You could feel it while pulling it too, but it wasn't like any issues at all. But one of the favorite things on this truck, I'll show you, and I'm, I don't want to take up too much of your time. We're at almost 10 minutes here. One of the things I want to show you 
is my favorite thing on here, and that is, see if I can do this. In the gauges, we have our diesel measurements, and you can see the exhaust filter, the engine brake, the deep EF level, the exhaust filter percent, nice to have. Uh, my favorite thing is that turbo boost gauge. You can also see the engine percent or the uh, engine brake percentage. And I like how every single digit, say I accelerate, that PSI is freaking rolling. I like that. I wish the speedometer did that because it would look kind of cool. If like it jumps like 31, 33, 37, it jumps all over. Where if, if it did it, if it handled the speed, how it handled the boost, every single one digit and it just runs real fast, I think it would look cooler. But uh, definitely a cool view here. It's kind of cool to see that. I know a lot of people complain about the exhaust brake. But the uh, exhaust brake is taking so much into consideration. It's almost like when there's brakes in front of you, like brake lights, it's almost like it's using the camera and applying more exhaust brake. And you can see it going up in percentages a lot higher. And another thing about this truck is despite being a newer emission system uh, and we don't want more emissions on our truck, so far it's handled itself really well as far as the regions and as far as like the soot and whatever it handles that stuff really good and it's not it's a better so far it's a better system in a sense of regions and stuff like that and oh my god do i get a region in and do i gotta keep driving and all that it's good in that sense it's the only the only real complaint that i have about the new emissions is the fact that it won't it i mean it's the fact that it doesn't sound as aggressive as an engine that's the one complaint so i wish i can get a little more sound maybe i can do some banks or something to this truck to get some more sound out of the engine but that's going to be for future endeavors but anyway i want to wrap it up my name is sean this is ds trucks Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.